Hi, welcome to Getting a Feel for the Meaning of One Sigma, Two Sigma, etc. Okay, so let's imagine a couple of scenarios. Scenario 1. Physicists at CERN report evidence for a previously unknown particle. The observations are consistent with the existence of this new particle. Furthermore, their observations disagree with the standard model expectation, which includes only previously known particles, by 3.2 sigma. So, you ask yourself the following question. For the sake of argument, let's assume, for the moment, that this particle doesn't exist, and the standard model prediction is correct. Under that assumption, what's the probability that this measurement would have ended up at least 3.2 sigma from the standard model prediction? In other words, if the standard model is correct, how improbable is this result? Scenario 2. Medical researchers investigate if a specific diet affects the probability of developing a certain type of cancer. They find that participants put on this diet had a 10% lower rate of this cancer than those in a control group. The difference was 2.7 sigma. They conclude that this diet may be protective against this type of cancer. So you ask yourself the following question. Let's assume, for the moment, that this diet has no effect on the rate of developing this type of cancer. Under that assumption, what's the probability that this study would find a deviation from expectation of at least 2.7 sigma? If the diet actually doesn't affect the cancer rate, how weird is this result? These stated results quantify the agreement or disagreement of the observed value with the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is the default hypothesis assumed in the absence of compelling evidence to the contrary. Or in other words, it's the hypothesis that nothing interesting is going on. In scenario one, the null hypothesis was the standard model prediction with no new particles present. In scenario two, it was the hypothesis that the diet had no effect on the rate of that particular cancer. Here, we're going to look at the probabilities of results falling more than one sigma, two sigma, etc., up to five sigma, away from the null hypothesis prediction when the null hypothesis is in fact true. We'll try to put probabilities like these in perspective by comparing them to probabilities of more relatable phenomena. Now the comparisons to real world events are not meant to be rigorous. The numerical values for the probabilities of real world events will not line up exactly with the one sigma, two sigma, etc. probabilities. Instead, they will be ballpark values to give a feel for how common or uncommon a result is. And I should mention, throughout this video, we will be assuming Gaussian errors. We're not going to go into Gaussian errors in any detail, so if you'd like more information on that topic, there are a few places you can look. First, you might want to check out the video, so what does 4.2 sigma mean? And what about 3 sigma and 5 sigma? You might also be interested in the playlist, the mini course on error bars, measurements, and decision analysis. And lastly, you might also want to check out the videos in the hypothesis testing playlist. Now I should make a quick note about notation. In talking about scientific results, 
we're going to say that we're measuring a quantity called Q. Q0 is the value of Q under the null hypothesis, and Q measured is the measured value of Q. Okay, let's start with one sigma. Now, assuming Gaussian errors, under the null hypothesis, in about 68% of measurements, Q measured will fall within one sigma of Q naught. So here, within the blue band. Now, this also means that in about 32% of measurements, Q measured will fall more than one sigma away from Q naught. Half of the time it will fall above the blue band, and half the time it will fall below. Okay, so under the null hypothesis, the probability of Q measured landing more than one sigma away from Q naught is about 32%. Let's look at some other occurrences with similar probabilities. Okay, so example one. Let's say you choose a card at random from a standard deck. The probability you choose a face card or an ace, so the probability that you choose a jack or a queen or a king or an ace, is 4 thirteenths, or about 31%. It's more likely you'll choose one of the cards numbered 2 through 10, but it's not exactly surprising if you get a jack, queen, king, or ace. Okay, example two. Let's say that you're about 35 years old. There's about a 30% chance that during a chosen 35 year interval, the place where you live will experience at least one 100 year storm. So you probably haven't been in a 100 year storm, but it's not strange if you have. Okay, now on to example three. Let's say there's a piece of space junk that is expected to fall to Earth. It is thought to be equally likely to hit anywhere on the Earth. There's about a 30% chance that it will hit land anywhere on Earth. While it's more likely to hit water, it wouldn't be terribly surprising if it hit land. Okay, so each of these occurrences, one, choosing a jack, queen, king, or ace from a deck of cards, two, having seen at least one 100-year storm by age 35, and three, the space junk landing on land, is not particularly surprising. And each of them has a probability similar to the probability under the null hypothesis of Q measured falling more than one sigma away from Q naught. Under the null hypothesis, having an observation fall more than one sigma away from Q naught is not rare. It's more likely that Q measured will fall within one sigma of the null hypothesis prediction Q naught, but falling outside the one sigma band is totally ordinary. Okay, two sigma. So under the null hypothesis, in about 95% of measurements, Q measured will fall within two sigma of Q naught. And this means that about 5% of measurements will have Q measured fall more than two sigma away from Q naught. Half of them will be above the blue band and half of them will be below. Under the null hypothesis, the probability of landing more than two sigma away from Q naught is about 5%. So let's consider some other occurrences with similar probabilities. Example one, if you draw two cards at random from a standard deck, the probability of getting a blackjack, so that's one ace and one 10 or face card, is about 5%. Example two, the probability of a 100 year storm at your location, 
sometime in the next five years is also about 5%. Now, you might not expect a storm like this to happen in the next five years, but it wouldn't be crazy if it did. Now, experiences like this are a little unusual, but they still occur reasonably frequently in everyday life. Under the null hypothesis, an observed result Q measured, differing from Q0 by more than two sigma, is a bit unusual, but definitely not rare. Okay, three sigma. Under the null hypothesis, in about 99.7% of measurements, Q measured will fall within three sigma of Q0. And that means that in about 0.3% of measurements, or slightly more precisely, in about one out of every 370 measurements, Q measured will fall more than three sigma away from Q0. Okay, so under the null hypothesis, observations of Q measured differing from Q0 by more than three sigma are somewhat unusual. Let's look at some comparably likely events. Example one. Okay, so we saw earlier that the probability of getting a blackjack if you draw two cards at random was about 5%. Let's imagine that you draw two cards and get a blackjack. Then you put those two cards back in the deck. And you draw two more. And you get blackjack again. If you draw two pairs of cards in this way, the probability you get blackjack twice is about 1 in 429, a bit smaller than 1 in 370. Okay, example two. Let's revisit the scenario of the falling space junk. 1 in 370 is approximately the probability of the space junk landing within 660 kilometers of some specified location. Alternatively, randomly choose a region on the globe about twice the size of Texas. The probability that the space junk hits this region is about 1 in 370. Okay, four sigma. So under the null hypothesis, in about 99.994% of measurements, Q measured will fall within four sigma of Q0. And in about 0.006% of measurements, Q measured will fall more than four sigma away from Q0. Under the null hypothesis, the probability of an observation falling more than four sigma away from Q0 is similar to the probabilities of the following occurrences. Example one. Let's say you flip a coin 14 times. 0.006% is comparable to the probability that it comes up heads all 14 times. Example two. It's also comparable to the probability of a 100-year storm arriving in a randomly chosen two-day interval. Okay, five sigma. Okay, so under the null hypothesis, approximately 99.99994% of measurements will fall within five sigma of Q0. And this means that approximately 0.00006%, or about 1 in 1.7 million, will fall outside. Under the null hypothesis, the probability of an observation falling more than 5 sigma away from Q0 is comparable to the following probabilities. Example 1. If you flip a coin 21 times, the probability it comes up heads all 21 times. Example two. 
If you randomly choose a half hour interval sometime in the future, the probability that a 100 year storm arrives in that half hour interval. And finally, example three, if you buy 170 tickets for the Powerball lottery, the probability that you win the jackpot. Okay, so let's briefly summarize. Here, we've tried to give a more intuitive feel for the meanings of 1 sigma, 2 sigma, etc. up to 5 sigma. We've related the probabilities of these events under the null hypothesis to the probabilities of more familiar phenomena. If you're interested in looking at this further, you might want to check out the video, So What Does 4.2 Sigma Mean? And What About 3 Sigma? And 5 Sigma?